Shalom everybody, I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief, brought to you by these guys, Lay of the Land, where we bring you the news every Monday to Thursday. Now we put out a weekly newsletter, so if you would like to receive it every week, please be in touch with us via our website. And you can find us at www dot lay of the land dot online that's www dot lay of the land dot online but let's get into today's top stories it is day 368 we are one year and one day since the events of the 7th of october now yesterday i shared with you some personal perspectives some personal feelings how i was feeling and, and, and to be very, very honest with you, I thought that I had prepared myself emotionally for the, the one-year anniversary, but I effectively hadn't. It was a lot tougher for me than I anticipated. And, and I thank you all, our wonderful community all around the world, for your beautiful comments. So uplifting. I did post the link to the Killing Roads movie, which is available on YouTube. I really, really advocate for everybody to watch that. And if you haven't seen Screams Before Silence, also available for free on YouTube, please, please watch it. It is so important when we see the unbelievable denial around the world about the atrocities of the 7th of October, the massacre sites, the evidence which I have seen with my own eyes, the, the footage which I have seen with my own eyes be denied by so many around the world. And these documentaries are our way of showing the world as much as possible without traumatizing everybody what happened on the 7th of October. Don't forget, we still have 101 hostages that remain held captive by Hamas in the dungeons of Gaza. We want them back home now. So let's get into today's top stories. And we actually begin with how the anniversary of the 7th of October was commemorated across Israel yesterday. I know many companies held their own ceremonies. Many people, including myself, opted to, to have space from being around others to spend the day in quiet reflection uh, and prayer uh, and just think about the year that had passed, a year where we are still engaged in a war on multiple fronts. But the day started at 6.29 yesterday morning at the Nova Massacre Festa or the Nova Festival Massacre site, very close to the border with Gaza. The time, 6.29, was the time that those first rockets were fired by Hamas into Israel. And true to form, Hamas started the day with a barrage of rockets at 6.30 in the morning. President Herzog joined thousands at the Nova Festival site. And I think I spoke about it yesterday when I spoke about watching some of the coverage. And it was so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. And all of a sound, sudden... All of a sudden, rather, you heard this wail of pain, this animalistic wail coming from somebody, uh, maybe a mother or a family member. It is a sound I don't think I will forget for the rest of my life. Throughout the day, the various kibbutzim had their own private ceremonies. Kibbutzim like Nachal Oz, Nir Oz, Kibbutz Beri, Kibbutz Kfar Aza, the communities around the Gaza envelope, opting rather to have private ceremonies rather than have a, a big national ceremony, many of them feeling uh, still betrayed by the government, by the army, and not wanting to be used for what they call any political purposes. And, and you know, we fully support it's their right to mourn however they wanted to. Last night, we had an incredibly moving Citizens Memorial, uh, funded privately, put on by the families of, of those who have either lost their loved ones in the attack or who are held captive in, in, in Gaza. It was incredibly, incredibly moving, featuring family members, some of Israel's best recording artists, and then straight after that, a pre-recorded ceremony put on by the government. 
uh, which had pre-recorded messages from President Herzog and Prime Minister Netanyahu. And uh, the president has embarked on a three-day morning solidarity uh, tour of communities in the south. Yesterday, he was at uh, Kibbutz Beri, he was at Nova and a few other kibbutzim. This morning, he was at Nachal Oz, he was at the Hamal, the control room on the base at Nachal Oz, uh, where so many of our female soldiers, the, the Tatspaniot, the ones who were watching what was happening in the Gaza Strip and warned of an impending attack and sadly uh, were largely ignored. Uh, he was there and he said that he calls for an immediate and thorough investigation into the circumstances that led to their deaths. Now, if you've been to Israel and if you've been to Nachal Oz, the area is divided into two. You have the base on one side and you have the kibbutz on the other. And, and the president will carry on his, his tour of the south, uh, including other kibbutzim today and uh, tomorrow some more of the kibbutzim and, and towns affected. And I think that the president has really been extraordinary, along with his first lady, Michal Herzog, really being our comforter in chief. And in his uh, comments last night, he mentioned that he, he'll never get the smells and the sights of what he saw in those days following the 7th of October out of his mind. And I concur. Last week, I took all of you along to several of the kibbutzim and the south, I will never forget that smell at Kibbutz near Oz on day 360, which I had thought would have left, but it was still there. And it's a smell you never, ever forget. The 7th of October was commemorated by Jewish communities around the world, as well as world leaders. And I will read you some of their comments. President Biden said, we will never give up until we bring all of the remaining hostages home safely. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, the 7th of October 2023 attack scared, scarred souls. And on this day, we remember all those who were brutally killed and suffered unspeakable violence, including sexual violence, as they were simply living their lives. Ironic words coming from the Secretary General who couldn't manage to put Hamas, the perpetrator of mass murder and sexual violence, on his blacklist for sexual violence. French President Emmanuel Macron tweeted out in Hebrew, he said, the pain remains as vivid as it was a year ago. The pain of the Israeli people, ours. The pain of wounded humanity. We do not forget the victims, the hostages, or the families with broken hearts from absence or waiting. I send them our fraternal thoughts. Also ironic, given that he wants to imp uh, impose an arms embargo on Israel, in other words, we mourn with you, but don't you dare defend yourself. Pope Francis declared the anniversary a day of prayer and fasting for world peace. He said, let us unite with the power of good against the diabolical plots of war. He also spoke about the Palestinians, as did many world leaders, including the Irish leader and uh, the British leader and many, many others. He said, um, let us not forget that there are still many hostages in Gaza and I ask for them to be released immediately. UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer made extensive comments. He said, uh, empathising with Israel, honouring the dead and calling for the return of the hostages. Notably absent from that list, but starting off his statement by saying the 7th of October invited a barrage of attacks against Palestinians was South African President Cyril Ramaphosa. I find it incredibly ironic, President Ramaphosa, because you are the head of a country that is charging Israel with genocide at the International Court of Justice, and yet you have completely denied and gaslit the genocide of Israelis that took place on the 7th of October. You did not acknowledge that, or the suffering of the Jewish community in your country. And you also have sided openly with Hamas and Iran, who have stated again and again and again that they call for the elimination of the state of Israel. I'm not going to tell you what Hamas said or what Iran said. I love you guys too much and don't want you to be sickened to your stomach. 
While this is all happening, there are still massive barrages of rockets fired on Israeli towns and communities. Yesterday, Hamas fired long-range rockets in the middle of the day towards central Israel and Tel Aviv and happily claimed responsibility for that. Unfortunately, we will never be free of the rockets in the Gaza Strip, but the organization as it exists is largely decimated. Hezbollah have continued to fire massive barrages of rockets, and today they have fired a record high of over 100, many of them towards the port city of Haifa, being the largest barrage of rockets fired at northern cities and communities since the 7th of October. And yesterday, around about 6 p.m., the Houthis from Yemen fired a ballistic missile towards central Israel, sending many of us, including me, into our shelters that was intercepted by Israel's air defense array. We now turn to Iran and the world is watching to see how Israel will be responding to the massive barrage of missiles that took place on Tuesday night last week when Iran fired over 180 missiles into Israel causing widespread damage to infrastructure but killing only one civilian, a Palestinian from Gaza. Now the Iranian foreign minister earlier today warned that he has a bank of Israeli targets should Israel respond in any way. And it is believed that Israel is unlikely to attack the Iranian nuclear program or the oil fields. Many believe that Israel's likely targets could be IRGC bases, but uh, only time will tell. And finally, in a story that did not get the coverage it deserves, during the Rosh Hashanah holiday last week, News broke that the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, along with uh, the Americans, and also, obviously not directly, but with the Iraqis, managed to rescue a Yazidi girl who had been kidnapped by ISIS and taken from her home in Iraq into the Gaza Strip. She was 11 years old, she was forced to have two children, and she was rescued by our forces after 11 years in captivity. Now, this rescue mission had been in the planning for months, and I'm sure we are going to hear more and more about it, but Fauzia Amin Sido was reunited with her family in Iraq. If you go back over a decade now to when ISIS were uh, embarking on their trail of medieval barbarity across Iraq and, and across areas that uh, belong to the Yazidi people committing wholesale genocide and taking many of the Yazidi women and girls captive as sex slaves. This is a truly extraordinary story. And my gut says, my gut says, if there is one Yazidi girl held captive in Gaza, how many more are there? Well, I think we're going to find out as the future unfolds. And now to the audience question of the day. It comes from Shannon from Dublin. Shannon wants to know, do Israelis think the world hates them? That's a very good question, Shannon, because we look around the world and we see the reaction to the, the worst massacre against the Jewish people since the, the Holocaust. And we see the marches on streets around the world. And we do believe, Israelis do believe that, first of all, we are misunderstood and that the world doesn't understand the veracity of the, the fight that we are fighting here in Israel, which we believe is the fight for, for civilization. But um, do I believe the world hates us? I don't, because I think the silent majority stand with Israel. I think many people are too intimidated to express themselves or participate in marches or be identified as pro-Israel. But Shannon, I do believe that many around the world stand with Israel. And here I want to thank the many Irish people who have stood up and stood for Israel and who have participated in rallies across Ireland. Thank you for that. I don't know how to say Thank you in Gaelic, in, in Irish, but uh, thank you so much for that. 
And guys, that brings me to the end of today's edition of the Israel Brief. Don't forget to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online, our Facebook page at Lottel Site, our YouTube channel right here at the Israel Brief. We are on uh, Instagram at Rolene underscore Marks, LinkedIn at Rolene Marks, and if there are any I've left out, oh, X at Lay of the Land 5. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I will see you again tomorrow for another edition of the Israel Brief. Bye for now.